and welcome to today's video. My name is Reagan. I normally do book content and today's another book video. Today's gonna be our book miss day 10. If you hear anything in the background, it's because my family is home. They're all out of school. Today's gonna be comparing the series that I started in 2023 and the series that I finished in 2023. I've made it a goal to work on the amount of series I'm in the middle of, comparing those numbers kind of thing. I will tell you if I started and finished it in 2023 and I will also tell you if I recommend it. We're gonna to start with all the series I finished in 2023. The first series I finished in 2023 was The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. I started this and finished it in 2023. I would say yes, I recommend it. I read these completely out of order. I read Happily Ever After Put This First, Secondly, The Friend Zone, and Third, Life's Too Short. I love the spines all together. I discovered Abby Jimenez as a new author for myself in 2023 and I read every single one of her books. The next series I finished in 2023 was The Akatar series. I've read this and reread it multiple times. I finished the series because I had never ever ever read A Court of Frost and Starlight until this year. I just never read it for whatever reason. Didn't feel like it. Never got to it. So finally Akatar moved over to my finished list even though it should have been there a long long time ago. And obviously I would recommend the series. One of the most popular series on the internet for a reason. One of the most popular authors for a reason. Definitely recommend. The Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey is a bind up of all five books in the series. I read most of them this month in December. It's a dark romance between a serial killer and an FBI agent. Very dark, look up trigger warnings, but it was a very interesting read, something I've never read before, and that's why I really enjoyed it. The Empyrean series by Rebecca Yaros. I'm also including series that I've gotten up to date on as finished, so when the next book comes out, obviously they will go back to my to be read, but for now I finished both of the books in the series. These were some of my five star reads of this year and I love them to death so obviously I would recommend. I was going back and forth on whether I should include this one but I did finish the Lakefront Billionaire series by Lauren Asher. This is the first book, it's the only book out but it is going to be a series and I did get up to date on it so I'm counting it as finished even though that might be cheating. It has some cameos from her Dreamland Billionaire series, I really enjoyed it, yes I would recommend. Number six is the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver. I don't have the last book here because my sister is borrowing it. I read the entirety of the Chestnut Spring series this past year and I really enjoyed it. One of my favorite series of the year, so I would of course recommend it. These are small town cowboy romances. This series actually made it onto my top 10 of 2023 list, so of course I would recommend it. Number seven is the Maple Hills series by Hannah Grace. I did get myself up to date on this series. It includes Icebreaker and Wildfire. I love a college hockey romance. I would definitely recommend. This is another one that I wasn't too sure if I should be including or not. Number eight, Letters of Enchantment by Rebecca Ross. First book being Divine Rivals. The second book is coming out on the 26th of December after this video comes out but I didn't know if it was cheating to include being cut up on the duology first of all because there's only one book out and second of all because the next book is coming out in like five days but I counted it anyway because I'm planning on picking up the next one would I recommend this I would recommend it because a bunch of people like it but I personally did not like it I rated it two stars which is an unpopular opinion I love the cover and I have hope for the second book so that's why I'm continuing on everyone else seems to love it so I don't want you to miss out on something just because I said no, but personally for me, it was a miss. There was too many books to get out all at one time for this video, so I'm pulling them out as I go, and it's kind of hard if I'm gonna be honest. The Brothers Hawthorne by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is one that I just got up to date on because there's gonna be more books coming out. The Brothers Hawthorne is the first in a spinoff series from the Inheritance Games trilogy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Unless you're a really big fan of the Inheritance Games, I say you can skip this. I'm gonna finish out the series just because I might as well. I think it's a duology. I hope it's a duology. If it's anything more than a duology. I might have to stop. I did read the first book that came out this year. Would I recommend? I honestly think no. Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This is the second Abby Jimenez series that I finished this year. It has Yours Truly, which also made it on to my top 10 of 2023 list, and Part of Your World. I read them backwards. I actually read Yours Truly first and Part of Your World second. Enjoyed both of them, and I definitely would recommend. Abby Jimenez is such a good author and one of my faves. Obviously, would recommend. The Knockamount Trilogy by Lucy Score. It is a small town grumpy sunshine romance trilogy. I believe I started and finished it in this year. Definitely recommend this one. A lot of people really love this trilogy, me included. Number 12 is going to be the When in Rome duology by Sarah Adams. It has When in Rome and Practice Makes Perfect. These are a closed door small town romance. They are really short, super cute small town vibes. I would recommend. Number
Number 13 is going to be the Avine Mess duology by Tessa Bailey. The first one is Secretly Yours and the second one is Unfortunately Yours. These are really cute small town romance series that take place in a wine vineyard. I think these are some of Tessa Bailey's best works other than It Happened One Summer. We're cute and fun classic Tessa Bailey reads. I would recommend. The Off Campus series by L. Kennedy. The first one being The Deal. This is a college hockey romance. It's honestly the blueprint college hockey romance. I did not start this one this year but I did finish it this year. If you haven't read this and you like hockey romances and you like college romances I would totally get into it. I cannot seem to find my copy of this one but I also finished the Spanish Love Deception series by Elena Armas. I read the second book The American Roommate Experiment this year. It's like an interconnected standalone series. I would recommend the second one but I personally did not enjoy the first one even though a lot of people really did. I don't know if there's any more books coming out but I'll keep my eye out. Next we have the Dreamland Billionaire series by Lauren Asher. First we have The Fine Print, then we have Terms and Conditions, and lastly The Final Offer. These are billionaire romances. I would recommend this. I would say The Fine Print is probably my favorite. Number 17 is The Twisted series by Anna Huang. The series includes Twisted Love, Twisted Games, Twisted Hate, and Twisted Lies. I would recommend the series if you're getting into dark romance. They're very spicy, very fun. Number 18 is going to be The Kingdom of the Wicked Trilogy by Carrie Maniscalco. This series includes Kingdom of the Wicked, Kingdom of the Feared, and Kingdom of the Cursed. So I read these three this past year, the first two as a reread, and then the last one to finish the series. It came out, I think, this year maybe. This is a fantasy romance series. I would overall recommend if you have never gotten into fantasy romance before, I think this series would be a pretty good starting spot. Number 19 and the last series I finished this year is going to be The Romancing the Clarksons Quartet. Too Hot to Handle, Too Wild to Tame, Too Hard to Forget, and Too Beautiful to Break. This is a series by Tessa Bailey. Would I recommend this? Overall, no. I think that this is a series by Tessa Bailey that you could skip. I rated a lot of these three stars and two stars, so those are all the series that I finished in 2023. The total is coming into drumroll, please. I guess I'll do the drum roll. 19 series, which honestly is pretty good. I already hate what this video is doing to my shelves. My shelves are a mess and it's kind of making me panic. Let's go over all the series I started in 2023. The first series I started is the Mistletoe Romance series by Cody Hall. This is going to be the second book but it is a trilogy so far and I think it will end as a trilogy. A small town Christmas romance series. The Winters family owns a Christmas tree farm and it follows the three children as they navigate their adult life and love. Would I recommend this for the Christmas season? Yes. If you're just trying to get into a romance series and you want a good romance, I don't know if this would be the first one I would point you towards, but for the holiday season, I do definitely recommend this. The next one I don't have with me currently because my sister is borrowing it, but it is the Fixer, the King Sibling series by Lucy Score. I read the Christmas fic. It actually does have a book before called Mr. Fixer Upper, but I read them out of order. It was decent. I would recommend. I love Lucy Score, but it's not my favorite by her by any means especially because the one I read was a Christmas romance. I can't speak for the first one which isn't Christmas themed. Number three is going to be Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. I did read this first one this year. There's another book in the series called Ready Player Two which I do want to read. I really really enjoyed this one. I would recommend. This one I felt was really easy to read, super fast paced. Number four is going to be The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I read it in one sitting, absolutely devoured it. It was so good. I am going to be continuing on with the series in this next year. So yes, I would definitely recommend. Number five is Love Light by BK Boris. The first one being Love Light Farms. This is a Christmas romance I read in December. I'm going to be continuing on with the series. It was probably one of the better Christmas romances. I definitely would recommend this like defeated. Okay. Number six is going to be the Broke and Beautiful Roommates series. This is a trilogy. I am going to be continuing on with the series. It is by Tessa Bailey. I have the other two books on their way in the mail. Would I recommend? Yes. You just need to be aware of the tropes and aware of how those tropes are going to affect you. If you think too hard about it, it would be a little weird. The next one is going to be the Black Tie Billionaire series by Kat Singleton. I did read Black Tie, White, Black Tie, Black 
Black Tie White Lie by Kat Singleton this year. I don't think I'm going to be continuing on with this series. I rated the first book a two star. I'm not going to say it wasn't bad, but I'm not going to say it was bad. It was just an experience. Am I going to buy a copy? Maybe. The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. This actually made it on to my top 10 books of 2023. There's another book in the series. I don't remember what it's called. I know the cover is green. I am going to be continuing on with this series. I really enjoyed my reading experience with this one. The Hades and Persephone Saga. Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. Am I going to continue this series? Maybe. It was a Hades and Persephone retelling. Out of all the Hades and Persephone's retellings that I've read, this one wouldn't be in my top five. I don't know, is my answer. Number 10 was The Remnant Chronicles by Mary E. Pearson. This is the series that comes before Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. But I read it and I really, really, really did not like it. I don't think I'm going to be continuing on with the series. I tell you to try it for yourself, but I wouldn't endorse it with my words. Number 11, however, was Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. I think this one was good. It was okay. I have no memory of it in one ear and out the other or in one eye and out the other because I was reading it, but I might try and read the second book if I can find a good recap on this one because I don't want to reread this. It would probably take a lot of convincing and a lot of TikToks for me to continue on with those. Number 12 is the Kings of Sin series by Anna Huang. In the series, I've read King of Wrath and King of Pride. I started the series this year and I am going to be continuing on with it. Would I recommend? Sure. It's okay. It's a palette cleanser. I don't really recall much of what happened with either of these books. It's going to be like a long series, like seven books, so I want to keep up to date with it. 13 is going to be the Magnolia Park series by Jessa Hastings. I read the first book this year. This one made it on to my top 10 of 2023 as well. I would recommend. You just have to go into it knowing that it's toxic and knowing that it's going to be like watching Gossip Girl and kind of a train wreck in the most painful, heartbreaking way possible. The writing is just magical. I really did enjoy this. I am going to be continuing on with the series. Number 14, the Bridgerton series by Julia Quinn. I read the first one this year. I am going to be continuing on with the series. I'm going to try and get them all in these cute little mass market paperbacks. I liked the Netflix show. Might as well read the books. I'm a books before the movie type girl. I need to get into it. The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. Wouldn't say I enjoyed it, but I thought it was good. Enjoyment is a little hard for the series. Definitely look up the trigger warnings if you're going into this book. I think I'm going to continue on with the series. I don't know when. It was pretty heavy, so it's going to take a very specific mood to get me to read the next one. Would I recommend? Yes. I started Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I had previously read like half of this book and then I DNF'd it, so I wanted to finish it this year. Would I recommend? Yes. I love V.E. Schwab's writing. Her stories are so complex and I love the unreliable narrator and the villain kind of that she puts as the main character. I really enjoy that. I also love her covers, but they got changed, so I will not be buying the second book in this series in the correct cover because it doesn't exist anymore, which is a shame for me. Read through it. It's okay. As for series I've started, that total came out to 16 series. 16 versus 19. The series that finished wins. I finished more series than I started this year and that is ultimately always a goal. I feel okay about this. What I don't feel okay about though was this video. I, you could probably see me progressively getting more and more stressed because I'm looking at my bookshelves right now and I am very unhappy with myself. Every time I had to knock over a pile of books to get to one of the ones in the series that I needed, I was getting like actually livid. It was not flattering for me. So if this is the first video you've ever watched by me, please go watch another one because this is not a great representation of my normal attitude. This video just made me uncharact- un- I'm gonna hit something. Uncharacteristically? Characteristically. Oh my god, what is up with me? Uncharacteristically mad. I think I might be hangry, but I'm not gonna refilm it. I cannot refilm this. This was how. Book Miss Day. 10. I hope you enjoyed this video. My socials are always linked down below. I have Bookstagram and a Goodreads. If you'd like to follow me on there, I would love to chat with you there. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. Thank you to anyone who has been watching my book miss. I am very grateful. I am very close to hitting 500 subscribers, which I never thought I would say. Thank you. If you are one of my subscribers, I've had my booktube channel since I was in middle school and I wish I still had the videos I posted back then because they were hilarious. It's just one of my favorite hobbies. I love editing. I love making videos. I love reading. Being able to do all three and people actually watch it is, I just, I don't understand. Maybe by the end, but maybe by when this comes out, we'll have 500, but that is crazy. So thank you so much. I don't even know what I was saying before this. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. Oh, that's where I was. Stay tuned in for Bookmas Day 11. I love you so much. Thank you for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next one.